Hello and welcome to Elephant English Podcast. In today's video, I'm going to be asking my mum some questions about the reality of living on a narrowboat. A few months ago, we recorded a video talking about what narrowboats are and after four months of living on a narrowboat, my mum is going to be answering these questions. So, are you happy living on a narrowboat? Yes, I am very happy. We've lived on the narrowboat for four months now and it's the winter and it's been very cold outside, minus five at some points and it's been rainy and windy. So, we think this would be the worst type of weather that you could experience on a narrowboat and so... Considering this, yes, I'm very happy because we've survived this this the bad worst part. Yeah, yeah, the bad part, the bad spell of weather, really. And what are the things that have surprised you about living on a narrowboat? Well, we live on a narrowboat on a canal, which is like a river, but it hasn't got a flow to it. So when it was very cold recently minus three and minus five, the canal actually froze around our boat. Uh, and that was quite a strange sensation. And when you looked out the window, you could see ducks and swans walking on the ice. So that was quite strange for us. But with regard of living on a narrow boat, I've been surprised that the boat feels quite spacious and we have plenty of storage. Um, when you look at a boat from outside, you think it's very small and you don't realise quite how much space you have. And also, I've been surprised that during the evenings when we're sat watching television, you forget that you're on a boat because the curtains are drawn and you could be in any house or, or a flat. And are there any things that are worse than you thought? I think that when you wake up in the morning and the boat is quite cold and then you have to go in the bathroom and have a shower, that has taken a lot of getting getting used to. But I'm not really surprised about it, but it's a bit of a shock to the system. But then you gradually get used to this temperature and you have a quick shower and you get dressed quickly and it becomes normal after a short while. Because if you think about it, really, for some people, it might feel like a step back because in a house, you don't have to worry about water, electric and all of these things. But on a boat, you do and you have to think about all of these things. So for some people, that's a step back and it's more work. What do you think? I think you could consider it a step backwards, but also it's a step forwards because it's quite environmentally friendly that you don't leave lights on. And where if you're watching television and the program's rubbish, you would turn it off because it's using your power. And you always have to monitor how much battery power you have. So you tend not to waste uh, water or electricity or gas. So you're very conscious of what you're using and your footprint on the environment too. Another thing I've noticed is that you're very connected to nature, aren't you, when you're on the boat? Because in the end, you're in the canal and when it's raining, you notice it's raining. Whereas in a house, if it's raining or it's windy, you wouldn't really realise, would you? Yes, I think that's something that we've got used to quite quickly but it's something that you became aware of when you came to stay on the boat that you can hear the rain on the roof and you can feel when it's very windy because the boat moves um, and in a house you would just go home close the door and you wouldn't realize how strong the wind was but it's very nice to be in touch with nature like this um, and I'm sure that in the end we will get used to the noise of the rain on the roof, 
But now when it's raining in the middle of the night, it, it's, it wakes us up. But I'm assured that maybe in a year, <laughs> you, we won't notice it at all. Is there anything else that you haven't got used to yet? I think that the size of the kitchen is something that we still need to get to grips with. Um, you try not to put too many things on the worktop because it's very s small. Well, it's not small, but if you have a lot of articles on your worktop, then there isn't room to put your plates when you're serving up your dinner. So you have to be aware of what you have in the kitchen and everything on the boat has to have a place, have its own place. And you have to be quite tidy. At the end of the day, you make sure you put everything away so that then you start the next day afresh. And would you recommend living on a boat to someone that is thinking about it? Um, it depends on the person. Um, some people have big collections of shoes or a lot of clothes and they find it difficult living on a boat. So I think if you're quite a minimalist person and very adaptable to your the way that you live, then yes, I would recommend it to them. But somebody who liked having a huge sofa or having a lot of video games or something that used a lot of electricity... Um, I don't think that it would be the lifestyle for them because you just have to be aware of what water, electric and gas, etc. that you're using. So it's not a lifestyle that everyone can adapt to. Um, I would recommend that people had a holiday on a boat first, on a narrow boat first, and then see what they thought about it. I think that if you live on a boat, it has to be your dream, really. I think if you hated living on a boat, you would really hate it. Yes, I, I think so. And at the moment, a lot of newspapers and television programs are trying to promote living on a narrow boat as a cheaper option than buying a house or buying a flat. And it's not necessarily so cheap buying a boat is cheap but then every time something goes wrong it costs a lot of money um and just because it's cheaper than buying a house it doesn't mean that it's the right thing to do for for everybody yeah so for example if i wanted to buy a house then i would prefer to pay more money to live in a house than a, on a boat because I think that I wouldn't like living on a boat. So it just depends on the person, doesn't it? And depends on your job as well. I can't imagine waking up in the morning on a boat and going to work. I think the lifestyle isn't really compatible. But that's my opinion. But there are a lot of people who live on boats and they have full-time jobs. But I know what you mean. I I don't think I don't think that you could live on a boat and have a big wardrobe of different clothes to wear every day um to a smart job. I think that a lot of people who live on narrow boats work online or have part-time jobs. Like you, you work online and you have a part-time job as well. Yes. I think a lot of um, people who live on the narrowboats are working online and then a lot are retired, so they don't have to work at all. But some people live in a marina where they just keep their boat in the marina all the time. And so it is like a floating flat. Um, so in that way, they don't have to think of all the boat jobs that they have to do every day. So in that way, then they, they could possibly work full time. But for us, the boat jobs take a, f a couple of hours every day. So what that's are something. What boat jobs though? 
Cleaning the toilet. Cleaning the toilets, disposing of the toilet waste, um, lighting the fire, chopping the wood for the fire. Just general keeping the, the boat tidy, really. So, in today's video, we have talked about the reality of living on a narrowboat. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment box below. If you have enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video.